Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to the course Decoding Comic Studies and Reading Graphic Narratives in 21st Century India. So in the last lectures we were talking about uh, Spiegelman's mouse and also we had a conversation or let's say discussion on uh, contract with a god right. So Will Asner and Spiegelman be discussed and the reason we discussed that they two are extremely significant graphic novelist and we noticed that the kind of a theme they explored and the kind of a devices they deployed to explore the theme and also how they kept uh, maintaining uh, the rhythm or let us say put it in this way that could maintain the interest of the audience and also talking about the subjective experience they remain as far as possible objective in documenting or talking about uh, the things that has occurred in their past. So the reason why I picked up these two I had already talked and elaborated on it. So today I am going to produce or let us say uh, bring something new for you and it is the title of the slide is the reading the first graphic novelist part 2. So, where we are going to look at uh, the dark knight riders and uh, watchman. The very significant reason like before I come to the slide and explain to you the very significant reason is that after uh, uh, we go through these uh, two important uh, let us say graphic novelist you will see that they change the very image of the superhero and also the kind of ex experiment they did with the style devices and artistic process is something very new. So therefore so far we have been talking about uh, how to read comic studies, what are the methods, what is the process, theories, histories so far we looked at in few lectures like, like last two lectures and now coming few lectures what we are going to notice is that how are we going to use those techniques which we learned in the past lectures with the help of the with the help of the novels before you right. So when I am saying novel what I mean by graphic novel. So here we have something interesting. So already I have explained you uh, all the major concepts and I am sure that you are already equipped with the technique how to read uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, work art. So what I will do for you, I will keep showing you the slides and I will keep explaining you the points which you want to understand. So please be ready with your pen and paper and start writing and noting down the important points and wherever I feel that this is something you need to be explained, I will again talk about it. But you have I am sure that you must have watched movies and if you have not read the comics please read the comics like even after the class right once the class is over you can go and read it and you will see something illuminating about comic arts alright. <coughs> so let us uh, go to the slide alright. So if you see the title of the slide it is uh, reading the first graphic novelist part 2. Alright, so what is dealing with? It is dealing with uh, uh, two superhero narratives which were published in the same year as Spiegelman Maosh, right, which we discussed in the last class and are considered to be heavily responsible for changing the entire superhero genre, right. This is exactly what I was talking about that if you read these two like let us say Batman and Watchmen you will realize that they are the one they changed the entire superhero genre 
the way we have been looking at a superhero genre now this is not the same this is something new that is offering to us right so now what the point is that we are going to read them out and we'll see that how they changed superhero genre right so in one case let's say for example the batman case you will see that there is something past that is constantly haunting batman and right in the watchman case something first time you will see that superhero obviously as the name itself suggest that they are not a common human being they have some super power and they are like here to project human beings or our society and atmosphere whereas first time in watchman we are going to see that they can also be villain right so something new is being introduced anyway i'll not reveal everything we will get to know we will uh, go deep into it and we will decode it right through our uh, reading process all right so look at the slide please now and you see that frank miller uh, frank miller as you could see on your slides frank miller's the dark knight returns right and this is a basically a batman story and uh, alan moore's alan moore's watchman right alan moore's watchman that redefined that sorry that redefined super hero figure so remember this point because that is the particular reason why i have picked watchman and the dark knight returns because they redefined superhero figure and also the genre all right so uh, and, and and it's also because uh, they uh, they changed our expectations right so far the way we have been expecting right expectations towards the genre expectations towards the genre so that's a that that's a particular reason why i am uh, talking about this right uh, it's not that my purpose is to explain you the story no this is not what i'm intending to hear right it's not that i am going to talk about what batman the dark knight returns is or the watchman is all about no what my intention is bringing these two before you that we are going to see that how our expectations towards this genre towards this uh, superhero are challenged and they they transformed it so that is a particular reason i am producing or talking about these two for you all right so look at the first slide now here what you see is a frank miller is an american comic book writer penciler inker novelist screenwriter film director and producer he is known for his comic book stories and graphic novel such as his run on daredevil as you could see for which he created the character electra right remember this electra right the character electra and then <clears throat> we have a subsequent daredevil born again right and that came out in 1986 right <clears throat> and then we have the dark knight returns that also came out in 1986 and then we have uh, batman year 1 that came out in 1987 even most of us were not born when these uh, series came out and then we have a uh, uh, sin city and interestingly 300 i'm sure that you also have watched movie called 300 but this is also a series that came out in 1998 so miller was born on uh, january 7 27 1957 in only maryland and raised in montpelier vermont and began his career in the late 1970s by providing the art for the twilight zone this is a comic series basically the twilight zone is a basically a comic series that was published by gold key right the published by gold key and that was based on the classic television show uh, created by the television show was created by rod sherling right 
So, these are the uh, information that you need to know and he soon found work with major publisher like, like Marvel and DC Comics we all know and familiar with Marvel and DC Comics drawing cover and interior art for a number of titles like most notably we have uh, Marvel's the spectacular Spider-Man right and we all know this and he became the regular artist on Marvel's Daredevil and in January 1981 assumed writing duties as well. So, Miller's Daredevil was a street level hero and comic depicted the gritty often brutal nature of his life and surroundings. Miller took full advantage of the comic medium right comic medium to establish the pace of a narrative utilizing multiple panels to create a sense of motion and urgency. So, let me uh, take a pause here before I proceed. So, uh, on your slide if you see these are the three panel 1, 2, 3 and if you see that right there is only these all are nothing but showing you see that in this panel you can understand very clearly that that it is nothing but look at this zigzag line here right and then this that and you see that how is running and here also you see so these are the small panel uh, I have already talked in details where there are multiple panels right uh, this is also possible that this all kind of event this entire event that is occurring in nine panels can be shown in one single panel, but the purpose was showing a sense of uh, motion and urgency right. So, his work on Devil, Devil marked a dramatic turn for both uh, that book and comics in general and helping to usher in a grittier more mature era of storytelling in comics. On April 18, 28, 2022, it was reported that Miller was launching an American comic book publishing company titled Frank Miller Presents or let us say F M P Frank Miller Presents. So, Miller would act as the company's president and editor in chief working alongside Dan Didio as publisher and chief operating officer Shalen Thomas. FMP Frank Miller presents expected to produce between 2 and 4 titles per operating officers right FMP expected to produce between 2 and 4 titles per year with the first title set to be released in 2023 in addition to his work in comics Miller has also worked in film directing and producing movies I am sure that we all know what I was talking about Sin City and 300. Now, so The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller that was uh, published in 1986 uh, marks a turning point in the history of a comics. Along with the Alan Moore's Watchmen, this comic legitimized a new language which had been spreading and consolidating over the previous years. Apart from the deconstruction of the superhero, work like these brought more to the forefront the presence of tormented characters. and subject matter geared to grown up readers for many it is still considered as one of the most relevant and influential comics ever and served as a guideline for the way in which the comic made its transition onto the big screen particularly in regard to Christopher Nolan's trilogy everyone knows this name Christopher uh, Nolan. In each of the four episodes of The Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller makes Batman confront a different nemesis, the two face the mutant leader Joker and Superman and each confrontation sets light on the all the various characteristics and inner conflicts of the caped crusader. So, now let us talk about the story, the story is set in an alternative universe where the superhero are all retired and only Superman still stands as a America's guardian angle. Gotham city is on the verge of a civil war while the cold war itself risk escalating. The story is told as if the television was constantly switched on 
and TV programs take up a lot of space in the story, commenting on every events in the plot. In the same way as which three new channels are used by Todd McFarlane in his poem, the author presents them as a background noise where everyone is unable to properly interpret what is going on. So, Bruce Wayne on the other side may be retired from his superhero duties, but sees what is happening. He sees that his city and his people need him and he cannot help but let Batman return. So, two recent developments in particular strike Bruce Wayne. The first is the appearance of the mutant gang, a group of young people ravaging Gotham city. And then we have the other is the at least the recovery of one of his worst enemies, the lawyer and criminal Harvey Dent Two Face, right? That is how uh, we know him. So, here what happens that Miller builds up, right? Uh, parallels between uh, parallel between the two characters, Harvey's mental illness has apparently been headed, and his face with its burnt skin has been cured, right? So, here you see this a burnt skin that has been cured. So, Bruce Wayne is no longer Batman and he's made the decision to be accepted as just another normal citizen. These characters, however, cannot stop being who they fundamentally are. So, when Bruce puts on the Batman cape anew, he responds to a call for justice and to an inner impetus. Like Harvey's illness, Bruce traumas his parents murder the bond with bats and darkness and the way he has found to handle uh, them cannot be erased. So, when Batman changes down two face who is committing at another crime and catches him, he pities him and himself, he sees a reflection of his own obsession, right. So, see the concern what I am trying to uh, uh, ask you to reflect upon. Is this that the Batman who is retired and when he, he is assuming as that he is a normal citizen, right? He is no more uh, uh, like other people, like sorry, what he was before. And therefore, what he does, but obviously, one thing that we are supposed to explore within ourselves that we are, we are not what uh, we, we, like once we assume a particular role, it becomes very difficult to leave that role and remain uh, other uh, kind of a people, right? Like the way other people are living. So, it is very difficult like if you get some position and then you again come back and you re restart your life and you think that you will remain normal, that is not possible. That is what exactly happens the same in the case of a Batman that it is not possible for him to remain normal. Obviously, when he saw certain problems occurring in his societies, then he wants to bring the justice. But interesting part that I wanted to bring before you is this that when he is facing two face, what he recall that it is nothing but a kind of obsession that he has with two face. Alright, so as the story proceeds, you will see that that he himself looks within and tries to find out that what kind of a person or what kind of a superhero he is, alright. So, let us get back to this, uh, the next slide. So, what you see here that the mutant gang, right, uh, like in the second part of the uh, Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller enacts a generational class. The mutant gang is trying to take over the city and its leader openly challenges Batman. They are young and strong, but also violent and arrogant. They are a basically metaphor for a generation at loss, which can express itself only by aggressive self assertion, right? So, this is what you need to pay attention to. This chapter puts aside Batman's inner dilemma and shows him as a hero saving the day. He acts as an alternative to uncontrolled violence and a role model to follow. As Miller said, superheroes draws the best out of people. Even if this Batman is brutal like never before, he always fights for 
what he believes is just and shows there is always hope. This is why people trust him and he manages to go on even after losing a fight. When he knocks out the mutant leader, the gang starts to look up to Batman instead of considering him a threat. Moreover, the author uses this fight and the general turmoil permeating the story also to criticize politicians unable to handle the rising crime rate in the New York City by the time. So, Batman stands a symbol which can show a different future to a younger generation, right? So, here you see that uh, this is two things that this tries to reflect upon. The one uh, direct attack on uh, politics and the crimes that the way crime is rising in New York City but is being uncontrollable by the politicians or the bureaucrats or, 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 let's, say, uh, uh, or let's say state machinery. Second that is interesting thing that it also talks about that uh, generational loss where the people if they are, uh, they are not happy with something their aggression becomes uh, one of the another way out to express themselves. And that is nothing but a generational loss where they don't have a kind of a fortitude or less a kind of a endurance, but what they have nothing but aggression and anger, right? So there are two things that Batman is constantly uh, 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 reviving, right? It's like it's like showing to us that we are supposed to look this uh, in a different uh, light. So moving to the next slides, that if you see that uh, part 3 of the Dark Knight Returns builds up to the final confrontation between Batman and Superman, right? But focuses on another old nemesis, the Joker, free, right? It is a Joker free thanks to the same fraud to a doctor who had sworn that Two-Face has recovered fully, right? Miller, uh, I mean, uh, what does he do? He, the, the, like, let's say the conflict between the two is the classic one, right? So, the conflict between Batman and Superman, I am talking about. Miller tricks the reader into believing he could break his golden rule and kill Joker and he is old. He is a old, tired of fighting against the same problem over and over, not strong enough anymore to keep up to all of them. However, Batman can bend the rules to do justice, this time more violently than ever. But he does not get to decide what is right or wrong. Even this time he cannot take a life, he cannot kill somebody. So this is what we see in the part 3. The part 4 shows the confrontation between Batman and Superman. Superman like if I, if I see of all four, Superman is not a nemesis for Batman, but they have a different perspective on what it uh, means to be a superhero. Miller pushes this disagreement to its limit. Superman wants to protect mankind, leaving it uh, free to make its own choices and this is why he agreed with the idea of dismissing superheroes. Batman would like to run society into the best version of itself, itself guiding people instead of just helping them, right? So, that is where you see that there are two superhero have a different way to operate or different way to function and they have a very different way to uh, uh, work in this society. Superhero is a person like obviously uh, I told you that he retires for a particular reason that let the people have their own choices. Let the people have their, uh, uh, they make their own choices and work the way they want, right? It's not the job of us to always guide them and regulate them or tell them how do, uh, how are they supposed to live. Whereas Batman is other way around, what he does, he does not only help the people but he also guides them that how, what model of a good society should be and accordingly people should behave, right? Like what is a good behavior, how people should behave and so on and so forth. 
and that is where you see it's just not about the two superhero anymore like one is a, uh, one is a superman and another is a batman it's a more about the particular ideology in which they believe in right the one is like a kind of a more democratic where he believes that uh, it is all about uh, the citizens of the country whatever the choices they make we are supposed to respect whereas batman is someone who works on a different philosophy and he is a kind of you know uh, like a, some kind of a socialism sort of where like giving certain things and telling them that okay let them live let them be happy and uh, uh, i would uh, help them always and i will tell them how to live so that is a very interesting so this is the class between superman and batman not only physically but also ideologically that you are supposed to pay attention to right so uh, look at the slides again and what you notice that uh, uh, batman would like to turn society into the best version of itself guiding people instead of just helping them so when a complete blackout strikes gotham and criminal starts ravaging the streets he even assumes an authoritarian attitude to contain the crisis batman knows he can act like this without becoming a tyrant the american president cannot let go this unnoticed and ask superman to contain batman so it is a long awaited showdown bruce enjoys being the only man who will ever beat up superman but also regrets what they could have done together instead of stepping aside superheroes could have changed the mankind the fight is a draw and bruce picks his death to get off the radar his real plan is to build up a better future and this is why after a fake funeral he takes with him a carry a newborn robin and the young people from the mutal gang who decides to follow him they decided to make up a team which will try to make the world a better place so here you see there's a conflict that is shown in the batman the one side he is quite okay like the look at the internal struggle ki batman is the one who could defeat superman right another like they both are superhero so one superhero defeating another superhero so he is the only superhero now right because another superhero was defeated by another one so the one who was defeated is less powerful than the one who defeated that's a one internal struggle that was a batman was feeling good about it and the second was obviously like no one won that's a technique and artistic device second interestingly what we notice is that you see the when you have immense power right people say that power corrupts everyone right if you have a power wealth so much so at one point of time obviously you like i'm sure that we all have read the kind of story that you start helping people but then you become exploiting people so what i'm pointing to talking about that batman uh, becomes authoritarian on the name of helping people right he himself forget what is he doing and that is why a uh, president has to call superman to uh, like to stop him what is doing and the third he also internally thinks because as you see that batman wants to establish a very good society and regulate the people to be a better with each other or to have a good uh, norms in the society and also the internal struggle that goes on between batman and in the in the batman is this that if batman and superman come together what can they do for the society that the question he ask you what we both can do if we both come together like single handedly i'm doing this much he does this much if suppose we come together what kind of society would be right so, so you see that it's just not about what is happening outside it's also about what happens inside of the superhero so superhero are also human being a kind of things that is shown like right? it's not like they have gone beyond the hero but they are like normal people like right? it's not like they have gone beyond the normal people they are very much like normal people right because they also feel they also think in the same fashion the way normal uh, people uh, experience and they feel all right so we'll talk more about it but uh, let's go to the next slide so if you see the next slide what be interestingly fight here that with the dark knight returns frank miller created 
an alternative bat verse which he has expanded during the years. The Dark Knight Strikes again came out in 2001. It addressed both the law, power of mass media and the aftermath of 9 by 11 attacks. DC Comics also produced a two part animated adaptation released in 2012 and 13. In 2015, uh, together with Brian Azzarello, Miller published The Dark Knight 3, right? Master Race, right? Look at the title The Dark Knight. Uh, Batman, the Dark Knight Master Race, right? Here you could see a kind of Americanism is also operating. And then we see in 2009 he published The Dark Knight Returns, The Golden Child, which may be an introduction to part 4 of the saga. So, the description of the event happening in the narrative would lend clarity to how comics have harbored the character of the superhero in its pages. So, as a sweltering heat first hits the outer limits of a Gotham city, the air becomes stagnant and the citizen gets a dry taste in their mouths. Progressively, the heat wave moves towards the center of town forcing Gotham peoples indoors. The average citizens run inside in search of the only victory he can obtain over the sultry day. With the turn of a knob, cool air blast from a vented ceiling, air conditioning begins to flow freely throughout the apartment. Triumph, it seems, come from within, right? So, I'm, I have just shown you uh, a picture of it, right? And I am sure that you will read, you will stop the video and you will read it. So, meanwhile, uh, for below the city limits, an internal battle ensues while a man escapes the heat with a cold drink of his own. Bruce Wayne, once uh, a man sure of his heart's ambition, is withering away. Like the many citizens of a Gotham city, Bruce is deteriorating into two levels, into low levels of lethargy. Like the citizens who allow the heated turmoil of the outside world to defeat what little strength they have left within, Bruce is questioning his ability to serve any real purpose. Surely, he too gets the familiar dry taste in his mouth. It is inauspicious, the taste he experiences before battle. He has realized that he is missing something in his life. He feels that there is a need for the great change in the Gotham city and the time for change is now. Bruce Wayne as a Batman comes from within the heart of a Gotham to cool the crime outside from within the deepest, most sacred crevices Gotham holds. He is the life of a Gotham. He is Gotham's triumph, right? So, as now he or she, as war begins to brew, it seems that all which is bad comes from outside sources that forces their way into humanity. In order to reconnect peace with people, Bruce Wayne first locates the triumph, triumph within himself and rediscovers his own power. Once he achieves invincibility of self, he turns his focus upon the citizen of Gotham, pursuing those who knowingly manipulate the masses and bringing them to justice. Finally. He approaches an evil that threatens entire city itself, an evil that comes from outside and menacingly pushes its way inwards. Only after he prevails over that which imprisons the Gotham or let us say uh, Batman archetype, the people and the city will the theme be revealed that triumph comes from within, right. So, interestingly, the question that uh, is being explored that the victory you can you can attain the victory you can reach to the victory uh, not from the outside right it's not only from the outside it's like it's a more like i would say psychological realism is operating where it's talking about that victory comes from within right and so so that's the one core point that is making all right so look at the slides now and see that in the next slide, 
in the opening page of a batman the dark knight returns there is a drawing of an x you so you see that there is a drawing of an x that covers bruce wayne's fish bruce has lost the inspiration for vigilant pursuit and has become like the average gotham citizen he is imprisoned by his inner angst his inner batman and is now attacking to be freed as he drinks his cocktail and contemplate his inner struggle a cold front coming from the midwest eludes to an epic reawakening of his symbolic nature batman right this seems to be a time when one must hide their form and become orderly from within see see the question as i have keep exploring uh, is that it's it's I'm, i'm exploring it not as a batman what is happening outside but it uh, i'm looking at is as what is happening inside within what happens within so so there is a there is a chaos not only the outside right there is a chaos that is within so in this slide what i was trying to show that even there is a lot of chaos anarchy problem internal struggle going on within the batman and the first thing that he should do that he should make this calm and composed all right so so this is a something interesting which uh, we are supposed to explore together so look at the slide again and you see that uh, this seems to be a time when one must hide their form and become orderly from within like the poetic general suggested bruce faces his fear right bruce faces his fear that is a point so fear is not only outside is also within right so bruce faces his fear and realizes that his fear is a fear that comes from the outside to within he pushes past the fear by making his enemies feel his fear finding them vulnerable to fear itself and once again becomes batman as he realizes that invincibility is in oneself right that is a point i am trying to make invincibility is in oneself So Bruce Wayne locates the triumph from within. He supersedes his fear, rediscovers the invincible power of the Batman. At this point, the heat turns to rain, and the wrath of a god is headed for Gotham. Right. So I'm sure that uh, uh, I'm quite clear what the point I'm making. Batman has now arisen from within the shadows of a Gotham. and goes forth to goes forth to the victory against those who plague gotham and its inhabitants as batman sits through the night he turns his gaze upon the people who dehumanize gotham citizens in the next scene batman watches as a cab driver knowingly allows one of his customers to be oppressed by mutant gang right as you could see on the slides i am sure that you will read as i have suggested right his waiting so batman concludes that it is a people like this driver who knowingly manipulate the masses for their own personal gain and have no thought of who they may be stepping on to achieve their gain these people are weak and as batman sees the driver pull a gun he concludes that guns are instrument of ill omen and all those who possesses such women are sorry such we- such weapons are part of the plague so the gun is a product of a fear that has been created from outside sources the batman rips apart the man's money he shows that if the driver would have had a better moral judgment he could have triumphed from within right so i'm sure that you understood what i mean and 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 the very purpose for which he he picks up the driver and the and and you see that he allows the driver to save himself and you see the metaphor of a gun 
and the metaphor of a plague they all are in fact the driver it is all are used nothing but to explain or to extrapolate or to decode what goes within it is not always the matter outside it is something within all right. So, going back to the next slide now if you see that as Batman searches for those who plague humanity continues he focuses on locating the point of activity the place the forms in which evil is evil's domination is exercised. The conclusion to that which is deterring the minds of a Gotham comes from the outside source of the media. The media experts now you see now coming to comment on uh, media and popular uh, media sort of. The media experts sit on a television and say what they want to say manipulating the people who are watching and because the average citizen sees these experts on the television they take what they say as truth. In the instance of an anti Batman shirt wearing expert, he is relying that Harvey Dent is now innocent and that it is the Batman who is the real reason for the crime in Gotham City. As the people watch this man and take what he is saying is truth, they forget that there was a crime before Batman and they are deceived. Those who manipulate the masses do it through an outside source, which is the media, they use it to deceive the common citizen because without deception you cannot carry out a strategy without a strategy you cannot uh, control the opponent right so the point what i'm making by looking at the slides is that one he directly attacks on the media and is also saying that how fragile we are that we get easily manipulated by the media though and it is a media who cre creates a lot of problems and people they tend to they are more they are they become victim of the act uh, perpetrated by media and they forget that the crime used to occur even before the batman but now uh, people think that's a batman because of the batman uh, the crime is occurring right so you see it's not the story i'm talking about it's the plot through which i'm exploring or decoding certain ideas and themes which are inbuilt in uh, Dark Knight, uh, Batman and Watchmen. I will talk more on the Watchmen later, but let us concentrate on the slides first. So, here you see that the open control, opponent controlled is the average citizens of a Gotham and this is depicted by Robin's parents as they represent a deed, dead engine for social change. The citizen have become like the air stagnant. Only when a product from within take charge does a change occur. This triumph from within is portrayed by the offspring of the parents Robin. As Robin joins the fight against evil, it is shown that the fight must first begin from within the people. Instead of people doing nothing and allowing the fight to conquer them, Robin shows that human nature is inside us that is the point right human nature is inside us and it is innate it is something like i could see hopsian idea is being explored right anyway we'll uh, discuss later not now so uh, yeah so as robin joins the fight against evil it is shown that the fight must first begin from within the people right to fight should start from within all right so uh, instead of people doing nothing and allowing the fight to conquer them robin shows that human nature is inside us it is innate and now that robin has joined forces with batman they begin to focus on the largest evil of all the evil that threatens the entire city right in the ground scheme of a thing the return of a dark knight as one of the main purpose of a gotham city the city of the gotham faces a terror that truly arises from outside its walls in the city uh, dump there is a gang of mutants who threaten to take over the gotham streets at first 
uh, batman does a, a good general should do and attacks when they are unprepared and not expecting it he establishes invincibility through the defense of his tank and makes his opponents vulnerable through their own attacks eventually batman prevails over the mutant leader and causes division among the mutants all this point he has solidified his illusion of invincibility he is a product from within gotham that is unbeatable and he triumphed over that which is outside the of the gotham that is a mutants all right so what we see now further you see when bruce wayne allows batman to emerge he regains his view of what his heart's ambitions truly are and what is the what is the ambition to help the citizens of gotham as the batman shows in each individual instance that invincibility comes from within he forcibly exerts fear into the heart of his opponent through his bat shoot he never lets his opponent see what state he is in for if the enemy sees uh, your condition he will surely have a response in all that batman does he strives for a revolutionary change batman creates his revolutionary process of a change through attacking the source behind the mind numbing media he shows that not helping the oppressed is just as bad as being an oppressor right so so understand this the point that is making that helping the op like if you are not helping the oppressed it simply means that you are like an oppressor through his form of a justice he hopes to show the people that if one fails to recognize these points of support of a class power one risks allowing them to continue to exist and to see this class power reconstitute itself even after an apparent revolutionary process finally batman establishes his power over a great threat outside of gotham he shows that even though there will always be threats trying to corrupt from the outside triumph always comes from within now interesting points the dark knight returns may have kicked off a new wave of western comic making in all intents and purpose above all the dark knight returns stands out for its density and coherence right it is a complete it is a complicated exploration of power and violence that's more interested right in making readers intuit complexity that coming to conclusion it is at once hysterically satirical and darkly serious it captures the absurdity of a fighting violence with violence right and the depressing suspicion that maybe violence is inescapable it portrays a world where we can barely get a handle on who is good and who is evil but where is a relentless media is eager to frame that ambiguity in the simplest most self serving terms it is about the fear of a growing old and powerless of being helpless in the face of a world's problems it is about the fact that fear of a powerlessness often causes the world's problem in the first place right so see if i'm if i have to look at interestingly what the dark knight return is about so one violence begets violence but without violence we cannot control the violence like look at the paradox i'm talking about second we all are scared of being powerless so we all are looking for a power and so far we explored that power is nothing but another name of a violence or a dominance right so you see that this is a kind of ambiguity this is a kind of satirical attitude but it is dealt so seriously that we have to sit back and think for a second that what this is about right we all are playing and par participating in the same game we don't want to be grow old we don't want to be helpless and the fear of growing old and the fear of being helpless creates a kind of a violence in you which you look for a more power and therefore you create a violence right 
So it's not about a particular gang, it's not about someone outside who is threatening your social order, but it is something that it is from within that is someone who is creating a horror or rupture in your social order. So look at the slides please now again. So here you see that uh, uh, I mean the more importantly it deals with these ideas at most fractal formal levels where everything from color to frame into the choice of a which Batman character to use make the themes and story richer. The Dark Knight Returns is an eye opening and eye opening read not because of its idea per se, but because of how completely it executes them. You become suddenly aware of what formal things comics were comprised of because the book uses using so many aspects to form to express this thematic core. There are uh, any number of things you could analyze about the Dark Knight Returns, but let us instead focus on the formal specifically three ways in which the book succeed as a comic, right? That is another important thing. One, color at its best does not merely describe a drawing, right? Color is not mainly meant for a drawing, it interprets it, right? Just as a good drawing does not merely describing a scene. Lynn Worley, Miller's frequent collaborator and the colorist for The Dark Knight Returns is particularly excellent at this. It is always difficult to ascribe exact creative credit in a collaborative medium. But if you look at Worley's scholar work in other comics, she has a remarkable ability, right? She has a remarkable ability to create patterns and draw the reader's focus to the most important part of a scene. In Ronin, that was in 1983, she builds a rich color language based around warm hues versus, versus cold hues, right? Warm hues versus cold hues. Every time the color shifts from orange to green or red to blue, it suggests something particular. In 300, 1998, harsh black and red contrast against the delicate yellows, brown of the landscape when the color becomes more earthy, more harsh, more blue, you can read meaning into the changes, right? You can see the uh, screen itself. So the color in Electra lives again, right? Let me write it for you. Electra lives again, you see that is compared to some of Miller's other collaboration even from the same era as the Dark Knight Returns, the color work can clearly be found lacking in the same focus. And then we have the color in Batman year 1, for example, seems to have chosen based on what is a broadly naturalistically, naturalistic or atmospheric rather than on what might suggest something on the level of idea, but even among the many Miller Warless collaborations, nowhere do color and theme seem so tightly linked as the dark night returns, right? So the color symbolism in the dark night return is a very simple but very powerful foundation, Batman himself. Batman's costume, look at the costume is comprised of a four basic color, blue, black, yellow and the gray, the very same color that are used to background the speech boxes of the book's major characters, right? So Clark Kent thinks in blue, Lieutenant Gordon in black and sometime in white, Carrie Kelly in yellow and Bruce Wayne who binds them all together think in a gray. So the Joker who stands out by virtue of not being associated with one of a Batman's color always thinks in green. So over the course of a book, they are only a handful of ex exception to these character 
color rules every uses of a blue or yellow or a green suddenly becomes loaded with a meaning so color simply means that something is going to be suggested or interpreted right so so as the color in fact as the color association right this this, this color association suggest that we are supposed to see these four characters Kent, Gordon, Kelly and Bruce Vanna himself as four different aspects of a Batman's personality and motivation. We can also see them as four different answers to the question what attitude should one take towards dealing with the world's problems, right? What attitude should take? No, you could I mean see and realize that how color is uh, contributing in the interpretations or in the generating the meaning. The four panel that you show, it is nothing but is trying to address the question that if there is a problem that is concerning the serious problem, what kind of attitude you are supposed to inbuilt when you are responding to the words problems, right. So, look at this, the color is not only for uh, the way we think is just for decorating. Uh, the pages or the papers or to generate the interest among the audience, right? It is more than that. It is something has to do with generating the meaning. It is more about that you can know what is happening, right? So, you can be aware that when you are looking at this, you can see the meaning being created. So, look at the slide again. So, here is the point what I am making that uh, one might argue that Batman is conflicted between this different part of himself and one would be right, right? One would be right but the very fact that characters are part of a him suggests an additional reading. What is that reading? That there is something that is also the same about them. As the story develops, parallels between Batman and Superman and the mutants, right? And the sons and everyone else, we realize that uh, we realize that these ambiguities were prefigured by the color scheme all along. So, what does each character represent, right? This is the question that I am asking. That what is this question? Uh, 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 what is this? Uh, what does this each character represent? In fact, uh, Superman uh, is the book of uh, books avatar of state power and of at least obedience to it. It hobnobs with the president and it stops nuclear bombs. He is the picture of idolized virility and would not look amiss atop a fascist or Soviet monument. He apparent youth, his apparent youth and strength are quite literally inhuman. So, blue is the color, right, is of his spandex, half of the stars and strips and American policeman uniforms. It is the color of law and order, just or unjust, right. So, with the association in mind, it becomes significant and almost chilling that Batman so often appears to be draped in blue. The president is often seen in blue, juxtaposed with the blue haired. Clark Kent, right? You look at this. The police is also seen in the seeds of grey and blue. Commissioner Gordon, in turn, is uh, the face of mortality and cynicism. If Superman is the part of a Batman that desires power, that feels like a man of a 30 or 20, that thinks he has the right and duty and ability to take the law into his own hands, then Gordon is the Batman that is an old human man that will grow even older, that will spend a lifetime in the trenches of the world and never really win. The more the story progresses, the more fraught the concept of a law and order becomes and the more Batman is depicted in the silhouette and in black, right. So, what uh, we also understood is that how color is, color is a uh, sending us a message or talking about a big theme like state power, bureaucracy, 
corruptions, law and order, mortality and immortality and how justice is something that is always delayed or postponed. Alright, so what I will do here, I will uh, end here for the day and I would ask you, you can st like you can go back and reflect on all the points that I made for you because that will, uh, because I will start the next lecture from where I left, right. It is something that is more to be added. I have not still picked up Watchman and will talk more on the color and something more about the comics, but this humble request to you, please read uh, these two uh, comic book or let's say graphic novels so that we can understand more in details. All right guys, so see you for the next time. Bye bye. Take care of your health. Good day. Thank you so much. Thank you.